Welcome to the Multifamily Collective. I am your host, Mike Brewer. And this past week, I had the opportunity to catch up with Allison Salit from Mark Taylor Consulting. Allison, in this role at Mark Taylor Consulting, facilitates their mix of internal expert services to clients throughout the asset management lifecycle. Allison's leadership also extends beyond Mark Taylor Consulting's division as she oversees Mark Taylor's communication and project management functions, where she ensures that team members, partners, and clients are informed and engaged. And this conversation was jam-packed with value. Uh, just some highlights from the conversation. We had the opportunity to unpack what Mark Taylor's consulting division does uh, for the marketplace, for their clients. Uh, we also talked about the role of marketing and branding as it relates to launching a new asset into any market. Uh, we also talked about the role of technology and innovation as it relates to that. Another exciting piece of this conversation was unpacking Mark Taylor's culture, which I think is one of the best cultures in property management in the country. Uh, we also talked about, well, in cap, uh, we in cap by talking about opportunities for females in the real estate space. So as is tradition, grab your favorite beverage, sit back and relax and enjoy this conversation with Allison. Allison, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. I was very excited about this conversation because I'm familiar with Mark Taylor and I know that you guys have been working on some very interesting things. And so maybe we can set the context with our audience by you uh, telling us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Mark Taylor and what's happening there. Absolutely. I uh, would be happy to. So I um, oversee our consulting department at Mark Taylor, as well as our communications and project management um, and, and Mark Taylor, as you know, it has been around for 40 years in the property management business and the development business. So we uh, develop multifamily communities, class A luxury. We property manage them. And as of late, we consult on clients uh, for them. So we really go above and beyond and, and harness all that internal knowledge that we have. Uh, and we've expanded our services. But, you know, where I fit into everything is I'm helping uh, grow our consulting platform, which is taking that knowledge and, and bring it to the clients who need it. We've for about four years had clients that are asking us, you know, uh, from the beginning of the asset life cycle, um, you know, if we can partner with us, with them there, um, if we can improve their marketing, if we can rebrand, things like that. So it's really this full picture uh, that we're helping bring to clients and grow. So that's where I fit in. Got it. Excellent. Thank you for doing that. Um, so 40 years of industry knowledge. I know much of that is specific to the Phoenix market and I think the Nevada or Las Vegas market, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, but my imagination tells me a lot of the fundamental principles that you've learned over the last 40 years are certainly applicable across the, the geographies of the United States. Is that fair to say? Yes, we do specialize in Arizona and uh, we're in Las Vegas as well, but we've had this footprint in the Phoenix metro area for the past 40 years and it is unique uh, compared to other markets, um, even though our knowledge does apply to other markets. So it's it's really amazing to work with John and Michael who have been here at Mark Taylor and in this business for 20 plus years. So the amount of historical data and just knowledge um, they've been through all the economic ups and downs and they know how to handle them. And um, it's really taking that knowledge and, and bringing them outside to clients who, you know, maybe a client is um, a developer, but is new to the Phoenix market. We have some of those, you know, maybe they've been around, but they're struggling with these, you know, economic headwinds and, and they need some marketing and lead generation support. Um, it can be any number of things, but uh, we're primarily experts in, in Phoenix for sure and, and Las Vegas as well. Excellent. Talk to us about, so consulting is a big word. I know we're talking about multifamily, so that narrows the scope a little bit, but mm -hmm. I know there are there are different aspects of property management in the multifamily space. So let's unpack Mark Taylor consulting kind of division by division, so to speak. Sure. So I'll start from the big picture, right? So yeah. we have at Mark Taylor, we have Mark Taylor Development, Mark Taylor Residential, and Mark Taylor Consulting. Now development, we have developed 72 Class A properties in the Phoenix area um, and have retained management on uh, about 12 of them. Um, and then residential, we third party manage as well. So we have about 100 plus communities that we third party manage. 
um, in, in this area in, in Las Vegas. And then when it comes to consulting, that's where it's, it's taking that, pulling that knowledge and bringing it to those outside of traditional property management. So I'll give you a couple of different examples. Um, traditional property management, you know, it starts with uh, the selection of management, which is, you know, a few months out from the actual opening of the property. But the journey starts way before that, right? So it starts years before that. That's and right. um, we've been finding out that, you know, with the selection of land, with just knowledge about the submarkets, um, asset types, because we've managed and leased up the most BTR that there is, um, I think, in the nation. Um, and, and all of those different things that you need to know ahead of the game, um, you know, raising equity, uh, just navigating the whole process, um, getting a construction loan. All these things are, are steps that come way before that traditional property management agreement. So we can be on board now with some of the internal knowledge that we have um, to take you step by step through those couple of years of steps that roll into a property management agreement. A couple of the other steps that people maybe don't necessarily think about but are necessary are the branding. You know, what are you going to name your property? What are the colors going to be? What audience are you appealing to? What are the demographics? Uh, what's going to land with them? Um, and then the marketing part of it, right? So uh, it's the, what does your website look like? You know, what advertising are you using? Um, what uh, CRM are you using? All those aspects. Um, and then if you also think technology, you're thinking about, you know, what smart home technology am I using? What access control am I using? What Wi-Fi? So there's really so many things that you need to think about. And that's a lot of different pieces of knowledge, right? So you need the IT knowledge, you need the marketing knowledge, the branding knowledge, but then you also need that, you know, just development and property management knowledge. So what we've really done is we've rolled that into this package and say, hey, you know, we can consult with you from day one if you want to know everything that we know from doing this for 40 years from a developer's and a property manager's perspective. So we kind of take people through the whole journey and consolidate. So I'm sure you've had this experience where if you're working on a project, whether it's a development or any sort of project, you're probably using a number of different sources, vendors. I'm planning a wedding, for example, and I can tell you that coordinating, you know, a million different vendors for the same goal is is really challenging and it consolidates those resources. So it's just, we're here, just ask us. We kind of know everything through the asset management life cycle and we know the good partners. We, we you know, we work with them. We have these strong relationships. So we can kind of take care of that for you. So that's, it's just the whole package. It makes sense. It's it's interesting. I'm, I'm smiling not only for the wedding planning, <laughs> but also, you know, on the on the pre dev side, when you're sourcing for land and you're putting together all everything that is associated with that. Sometimes you, in this industry especially, people, um, let's use the word ego, get your ego involved, and you think I can figure all this stuff out. I can make all those phone calls. I can shepherd all this stuff through the th through the process, but. The value of a really good consultant who understands who to call, when to call, what to ask is, it's just hugely valuable. Is that, how much time would you estimate that you save on the front side? And I know some, sometimes cities move slow, but for the client, trying to figure out that, how much time do you think you save a client? in that process? You know, it really depends based off of client, but that's an excellent question. I would say upwards of, of many hours a week, um, mm -hmm. you know, 10, 20, whether it's, you know, just pulling together, for example, like with a construction loan, just pulling together, like everything you need for that, you know, what information do you need? Uh, what, what is important to highlight what's going on in the sub market that all takes, you know, Probably it could take up to 20 hours or more, depending on how robust you need it to be. And when you just say, hey, you know, here's the information we have. Can you guys do this for me? We have the internal knowledge from a development perspective um, with our managing directors and, and our development team. We have the, you know, the communications team that can like make it all clear and, and work together. And then we have the creative team who can brand it, you know, make it your own, all of that. So it's kind of just calling us and saying, hey, you know, this is what my goal is. Um, can you do this? And it really just depends on the request. I think the with the pre-development process, it, you know, really goes in waves in terms of like, okay, now it's go time, now it's not. Um, so it really just depends on the week. The, yeah, it, it totally makes sense. And I, is it, is it fair? I'm 
taking a right turn here mm -hmm. um, or a left turn, whichever you choose. <laughs> the, the, uh, when you're thinking, you've, you've introduced another product. And as I understand the product, I've never used it. It's the data collection or data analysis. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. And I apologize for that. But Is it using... multifamily metrics that you're referring to? Yes. Is yes. that <laughs> is that part of your arsenal as it relates to mm -hmm. you doing the development and how you share that? Can you talk a little yeah, bit about Yeah, I can that? definitely put those puzzle pieces together. So yes. when we think about Mark Taylor Consulting, um, you know, if you don't know us, uh, you might want a sort of a taste of like what historical data we have. Um, you might just need a little bit of supplemental, supplemental knowledge about our market. So we release um, seven different reports per month through a paid subscription service. Um, even if, you know, for people who aren't consulting with us yet, um, that, that really walks them through the latest and greatest in the market, right? So whether it's, you know, capital markets or um, employment or um, absorption, it, it really takes people through like, what's the latest data that you need to know? Um, and, and that's called multifamily metrics. So that's our subscription service. Understood. Yeah. And that was just released not too long ago. Is that, is that right? Yes, it's it's fairly recent. Um, uh, earlier this year uh, was the, the first time we officially released it. Um, it's something that we've been doing in-house for a long time. So actually, John, for uh, our president, for a long time has gone through and really authored these reports himself with the help of the portfolio development team. Um, and we kind of took a look at them and, and he wanted to, you know, share this data more broadly. And, you know, people would, of course, pay for that knowledge because it's, it's such a uh, like, you know, good nuggets to have and, and to have in real time. Um, so now our portfolio development team pulls together um, those narratives each month. And then every quarter, John actually still authors the quarterly himself. Um, you know, we kind of package it together and, and send it out to all our clients and our multifamily metrics subscribers. So it's it's just a, it's almost like a small taste of consulting if, if you don't need the full bite. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, let's shift. Okay. So now we've used, uh, metrics and data to assist in helping clients develop, um, communities, um, marketing and branding. You touched on that briefly. Marketing and branding is a huge thing. And I, I think I'll make this statement. I don't necessarily believe this, but somebody said trying to brand an apartment community and or a property management company is a lost art or something that is just not even possible. Do you... <laughs> Would you debate that and then talk a little bit about how important marketing and branding is in the launch of a new asset? Yes. Yeah, so I would not, I would say the opposite. I would say it is more essential than ever. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, from a marketing perspective, there's a lot of competition out there, right? There's a lot of different uh, ways of searching and, and competing interests. And there's a lot of noise in general that's going on in just our day to day. So having the marketing that really hits the demographics and hits your target audience is really helpful. So, uh, and branding as well. So to, to start that process, you really have to understand, okay, demographics, what is my target audience in this area making? What are they doing for fun? You know, what amenities would they want? Um, you know, how do they think and, and what are their goals and, and what are their uses? You know, if you have, um, a, you know, a Gen Z population and, or you have students, they're probably going to want to congregate, hang out, you know, do different things. They're probably going to have different interests. So you really have to tailor it to that specific demographic. And um, when you brand it, you want to, you know, make sure in terms of like the marketing of it all that you're not um, doing something that is, is not easily searchable. So if you, for example, like Google, um, if you want to name your community Mark Taylor, if you Google Mark Taylor, we're going to interfere with a few of those searches. <laughs> so it's probably not the best uh, name to have. Um, but so, so you want to keep uh, keep in mind all the keywords and everything. And our, our marketing teams are the experts on that. Um, and then you, you want to make sure that it's it's branded in a way that, um, you know, is, is visually appealing, will work in multifamily specifically, because some things that are, are designed maybe just for digital won't work for like interior design and things like that. So you want to make sure that it's very, uh, it's very much a seamless flow. Um, and then from the marketing perspective, I mean, that's crucial to your operations, especially um, you need those leads coming in. You need 
the right leads coming in. You need to understand their like buyer behavior, especially in a renter's market where they probably have a lot of options, a lot of concessions going on. Um, so, so you need to stand out from the crowd. So our marketing team and our creative team are really those experts in tailoring it specifically. Um, and then you got to have the right CRM. Uh, we have a you know centralized CRM and uh, we take advantage of texting and email and, and all of those things, but that's really necessary at this point. Yeah, I, I totally agree with all of those things that you said. It, it uh, brought to mind, if you were to say what, because I do think that Mark Taylor is a very special brand in, in the marketplace. I just do. I have, I've traveled and lived all around the country and there's just something that sets it apart. I want to hear from your perspective. What do you think really sets Mark Taylor apart from the competition? Well, I would say that there's a lot of legacy that we have a company that is somehow translated into our brand. I think that the teams do it really well. Um, but you get the sense of, you know, modern luxury that is high quality. And I think that it's important that when you walk in, um, you know, the all of the different, uh, like even down to the Mark Taylor mat that you walk on, everything is very familiar. It is that high quality that you're used to. The same smell is there. The staff, you know, it gives the same five-star service. They're known for, you know, the landscaping and the cleanliness in the Mark Taylor uh, communities. So, and then when you think about different asset types, you, you take it to there and it's really that whole experience. But then the team is able to encapsulate it in, um, in the branding and the marketing as well. Uh, it's with the branding, they've refreshed it a little bit so that they've taken it into, uh, you know, a bit of a modern age, but they still have you know, most of the same colors and everything. They were just able to update it and give it those subtle twists that let you know that, you know, we're not changing completely, but we're definitely evolving as we go. You, you know, what What I think is so special about what you just said, and, and I'm going to use the smell, right? Mm -hmm. it, you use that as an example. And I think it, it is so important to understand that when a consumer is going through a buying experience, they're, they're registering a lot of things subconsciously, like smell, like things that they hear you say, and so on and so forth. There's so all these things that are going into this collective decision-making thing we call a mind or a brain. Mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, it's, they get home at the end of the evening after looking at a whole bunch of apartments and what differentiates you is some of that stuff that they don't necessarily, right? They just heard it or they saw it or they felt mm -hmm. it. So that's yeah, super important. Absolutely. It's all very much designed to be welcoming and home-like. And they really accomplish that with all the senses and all the, the digital things that we put out there. So it's something that we really pride ourselves on. Now you've been with the firm three years plus minus? Three years. Three years. And I'm curious, you, you've you lived the experience from a culture perspective and we're gonna get back to consulting in just a second, but I'm always sure. <laughs> interested to hear from from a you know somebody that works there somebody that lives in it every single day what it is what is it it is imbued in your mind that sort of comes out in your process of uh you know sourcing for clients out in the marketplace yeah i think our our really foundation is being people focused and we you know i know everyone says that but when you get in here and you know i've been here for three years i am from maryland so i'm not even uh, from this side of the country um, it, you just immediately feel welcomed by the team. And, you know, we have the leadership team that you, you know, no matter who you are, you can walk right into their office. They have an open door policy. New ideas are welcome. You know, anything is welcome. And I really do think that carries out and translates, you know, the relationship that we have with our clients is really close. Um, the relationship that you know, we have with our residents as well. We have residents that refer to it as, oh, I'm living at a Mark Taylor instead of I'm living at, you know, San Cervantes, which is mm -hmm. so unique. And I have, have never seen that before, um, you know, coming from living in Baltimore. It was, you know, you didn't know the management company at all, but okay. actually that trust has been created. So people will go to a Mark Taylor um, but I absolutely feel it every day. And it's something we really are protective of and try and emulate um, with all of our people. And, you know, I will say if you walk into, you know, the, the office and, you know, I have a wonderful team. If you just walk in there, you'll be 
laughing within five minutes. Um, I promise you that. <laughs> and I think that, you know, that sense of like genuine joy to be here really carries through. I, I noticed uh, you were recently doing, I think it was a in team member appreciation day and you were, you posted something on LinkedIn that you were out mm -hmm. and, and you were smiling and laughing, I think when in yeah. the photo that you saw. So yeah, I, I think you're right. The, the, uh, the culture just, it just screams of something that is larger than self and people just want to be a part of. Um, so mm -hmm. it's like a, it's like a giant family, um, so to speak. Okay. Absolutely. Back to uh, consulting. <laughs> Public relations is another offering that you have or another service that you offer. So let's un mm -hmm. unpack that a little bit. Yeah, and this is one of those that could be a second thought. I'm actually, my expertise very much lies in communications and public relations. Um, and, you know, with public relations, that's one of those things that you think is seamless, that when you do communications and public relations right, you almost are just like, you know, aware of something. Um, and if you think about it, it's very strategic and it's planned out and it can go wrong and it can go right. <laughs> and, you know, we really believe in, you know, getting out there. We have some fantastic leaders that like, you know, John is, you know, constantly speaking and, and doing these things and, and really spreading the word about what we're doing at Mark Taylor. And that is all, you know, really intentional. And um, it's, it's that, that orchestrated effort. And that's why you continue to hear about Mark Taylor. It's, we have the public relations and we also have the quality to back it up. And I think that, you know, when we're dealing with consulting clients, that's something that's an important piece of the, just the whole cycle. Um, you know, when it comes up to uh, your, you know, opening, you want to create that hype. You want people to find you. You want to, to highlight all the good things about it. If you have something that's a differentiator, you absolutely want to highlight that. Um, and, you know, spread the word because it it really makes an impact uh this is more marketing related but even the banners on um the side of the road you know that, that say it's it's opening people see those and and drive in so it's that mix of public relations and and marketing you know they're they're reading you know local uh local journals and you know clients are, are reading them as well and it's it's an integral piece of creating a brand um another example of that is, you know, with CSR, corporate social responsibility, you'll mm -hmm. see companies that are out there doing CSR and, it, you know, they pick a, a cause that is important to them as, as we have, we do homelessness, hunger, um, and veterans. And, you know, it really ties in with our mission, but it's, it's showing people that when we open a new community, we're, yes, we're providing great places to live, but we're also helping the community in, in a very genuine way that, um, creates that connection. And, and that's what we're all about. So we try and, um, you know, have the same things for our clients within their specific brand, if there's something that their community is doing or they're passionate about, or just to spread the word, um, because you, you really have to be discoverable and you can have an amazing product, but if people don't know it's there, that is, you know, probably going to harm you. So we want to make sure that that mix is very seamless as you go through that asset life cycle. Definitely. I, I think it's, it's interesting to me. I've been in this business for, uh, for a long time. We'll just leave it at that, but I've done surveys uh, across all of those years as it relates to communication, internal and external, generally internally, team members think that the company doesn't do enough communication. And then when you do a really good job and you overdo it, you get sometimes critiqued for doing too much. Yes. <laughs> you can't, you can't read it all. So it's that balance, right? It's yeah. you, you need to know, like it all, it's all about the audience. So it really depends on your audience and, um, you knowing need to know versus want to know information. And it's important for internal communications, external communications, resident communications, Residents do not want to know if you fixed, you know, the landscaping <laughs> over there. They want to know, you know, things that truly affect them. And um, it's being, you know, clear and timely and concise and not too much. So, again, it's it's interesting how it works, but both externally, internally, great strategic communications. You just know the things that you need to know and you're connected to what you need to be connected and sometimes you don't even realize it, but if it's too much, you definitely realize it. And if it's not <laughs> enough, you're, you're left wondering or you're left creating your own narrative. Definitely. Very well put. Um, okay. I want to shift gears and talk about um, career tracks, right? Um, you're a female in the real estate space. 
going back again, been in an industry a very long bit of time, predominantly dominated, at least in the upper echelons of, of the business by males. And although I will tell you, I have always worked for and reported to females. And I got to tell you, there is a clear difference between those two kinds of leadership styles. And for my personal experience, I always admired uh, the female leaders in my life. Uh, not that I didn't admire the males, but I always felt mm-hmm. more well-fed. Talk to us about your attraction to multifamily, your career thus far in multifamily, and what you see are some of the trends as it relates to females making their way into the space, because I love it. <laughs> yeah, I've been really lucky to have both male and female leaders in my past, you know, in Maryland, um, and then here as well. And it's just, I think the environment here, there's so much opportunity and growth in general. And in multifamily in Phoenix, like it's, it's really that perfect combination of, um, if you really put in the work and go after the opportunities, they're there. And we have a leadership team that is just so supportive of, you know, different types of people. Like if they put in the work, they make the results, you know, they want to see them be rewarded. Um, and you know, we also have, um, you know, many sayings here, but one of them is like, you know, fail quickly and then, you know, get up and try again. Um, just, you know, progress, not perfection. So we really are a fan of just those who innovate, who keep moving, who, um, you know, have that confidence and, and believe in themselves. And, you know, we have, um, you know, male and female, uh, on, you know, my teams as well. Um, and you know, that mix of, of uh, different personalities and styles are, is, uh, you know, incredible. And it, it really lends itself to uh, building each other up. And I think that, you know, I've been really just fortunate and grateful to be, um, you know, really just given opportunity and, um, supported, you know, regardless of, of who I am. I, I, I love it. I just, uh, Having been around a long bit of time and made observation of a lot of different things, I've just uh, I'm I'm really excited about the future as it relates to, to people making their way in the space. I, yeah. I do want to I do want to key off something that you said: doing the work. Um, I often say putting in the reps. Talk <laughs> to me a, about that because it's um, look every generation argue, argues about the generation you know after and not not working hard enough. But what is what does doing the work look like to you specifically? Well, I think I will say generally, generationally, it's interesting that some say that because, you know, we're more connected than ever. Just, true. you know, it, there are things that can happen around the clock that, that need to happen. But, you know, it, that's not the, the case most of the time. But I think that you you just need to be the type of person that like can picture the goalpost and really work towards moving for that. So yes, there are some longer days, some shorter days, there's definitely room for fun, but I think being results driven and seeing that goalpost and also seeing the whole picture and how all the cogs work together is an integral part because you can, you know, say you you can write a communication and just think of it only as that isolated piece, but what about the operational pieces and what about the change management? And, and what about, you know, the different stakeholders? And, and there's so many different things that if you're looking at things and you're able to look at things strategically and from that bird's eye view, um, it's it just makes it so much easier. And you're seeing, when I speak about that goalpost, you're seeing the organizational goalpost, not, you know, Allie's goalpost. You're, you're seeing yeah. how you can benefit other people and that's going to ultimately benefit you. That, that makes a lot of sense. It's, you know, the thing that, that struck me that came to mind as you were walking through that is the, the ability to critically think is part of the hard work, right? It's, it's one thing to use your example to write a communication, but to think about how that impacts or influences or informs all the other aspects of the business is quite an exercise mentally, right? Some people Absolutely. just stop. <laughs> they don't follow through with yes. that. Yes. It is, but I think that that's what keeps it challenging and exciting and motivating. And, um, you know, when I first came into Mark Taylor, there wasn't a necessarily a sophisticated communication structure yet. Mm-hmm. And I was able to, like, kind of build that piece by piece um, in a way that was tailored to the organizational needs. Um, so I think that that's where you create real value, right? When you say, okay, this is an area that can be strategic and can be proactive instead of reactive. And, and you kind of build that um, piece by piece and until you reach that goalpost. 
if that makes sense. Talk to me, do you have other pieces of advice for people that are coming up into the multifamily space, other pieces of advice that you might give to them along that track? Yeah, I would say that relationships are everything um, because this it's almost like a small town sometimes. Um, you know, you have a, a lot of the same players that have, you know, been in it for decades. And, and I think that is part of the reason why John and Michael and Mark Taylor have been so successful is because they have those trusted relationships in this space specifically. Um, but I would also say that multifamily, you know, we have a lot of innovating to do in terms of us as an industry. So that really means a lot of opportunity. So whether you're, you're in operations and you're working on centralization or you're really refining, you know, communications and the, the inner workings of a distributed workforce like, like we have done, um, there's a lot of different areas of opportunity and there's not always a multifamily standard for them. So if you can see the challenges as opportunities instead of just roadblocks, uh, then your your perspective starts to shift. That that makes a ton of sense. And you're so right about all the innovation that we need to do in our space. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it, it seems like, I, I know it's cliche at this point, but we, we are, people say we lag every other industry in the world, frankly, that it, it uh, our ability to adopt technology, make application of it has just been pretty slow. Mm -hmm. From your, from your purview, do you, what types of innovation do you see it, especially as it relates to when you're out consulting clients, what types of innovation are you talking about? Both things that are in place today, but things that you see coming around the bend. Yeah, well, I'll expand on centralization because that is probably the biggest one. And I know that we've all been hearing about it for probably about a year or two or maybe more. And everyone's been kind of working on it in, in their space. But that's something that's coming and it's, you know, not stopping. And it's something that we are, you know, we are really working on refining. Um, and uh, we're kind of almost at that finish line. Um, but it's that's the way of the future because you know when you're when you have a hundred and plus communities you need to harness the power and the work of one organization not you know silo a hundred different organiz or a hundred different ones and, and operate like different companies it's like you know you need to tap into the full power of mark taylor not just you know san RTs, you know what I mean? Um, and I yeah. think that we're able to do that and we're able to take people who have been really experienced at Mark Taylor, know the Mark Taylor way and centralize them and uh, support our communities and just get more and more efficient. And so that's something I think everyone has been trying to figure out, but it is truly going to be the way of the future. And if you look at other industries, they're centralized. Um, you know, if, if they have a big system and you're, you know, calling into a concierge or you're calling into support, they have this system set up um, so that they can be more effective for the customer and more efficient for the client. So that's truly the, the way that we're headed. I, I think you're so right. It, it, it's the fact that we're being influenced by the Apples and the Amazons and the Googles and the Ubers of the world. And, you know, people live in our communities are influenced by these other brands and they start to expect that your brand makes the same same offering. So I, mm -hmm. I think you're 100% right. It, yes. It's getting I will say, um, you know, if you think about the big giants and, and those that are centralized, sometimes you lose quality. Um, and customer service. And those are things that we're really focused on keeping because, you know, you, you want to make sure that the, the resident experience, and the customer experience is still being upheld. So I think there are some things that can get lost. Um, if, it, you know, some banks or some, you know, big organizations, for example, do it really well, where it's like, okay, if you have a good experience, you can find your answer. Boom. I'm always going to text you. Um, I'm not going to, you know, go through like the in-person appointment. You know, I can't remember the last time I made an in-person appointment for a bank, but you, you figure everything out um, because you have those resources. So we're really laser focused on, you know, we, we're known for this quality and, and that's something we're protective of. So we, we need to make sure that that is not lost in, in just how big we get. Yeah, you, you couldn't be any more right. And I think at that point that you made, about not sacrificing the consumer experience is is very relevant today because you're seeing the the broader market get squeezed a little bit by 
rent growth coming down, the cost side of the equation going up, and the first thought in most operators' minds is, oh, we've got to cut this or that or the other thing, but most of those things touch the consumer experience. You gotta be very careful. And I imagine consulting is, there's a big part of consulting that really speaks to that point. Yeah, you know, you have to know what's essential, what's not essential, um, you know, what's what's gonna be the cause and effect of certain things. And, um, you know, we will, like the market will pick up again and uh, you wanna have a, a great product. And, you know, I know our clients do as well. So it's, uh, it's, you know, committing to, to not sacrificing to that quality, but but finding different strategic ways to do so. And, you know, for example, centraliz- centralization is one that can uh, save costs with without sacrificing that quality. So it's it's making sure that you still maintain that quality. Definitely. Now, um, I should have asked this at the beginning, but I forgot. The consulting service is not only uh, available to a clientele that actually comes on to build the property that you ultimately manage. It is open mm-hmm. to everyone. Is that the audience is whoever yes. needs your service? Absolutely. So, you know, it, it can work from, from day one throughout the cycle, or it can be, you know, hey, we're building BTR in uh you know, this market that, you know, you guys maybe don't reach, but we know you are the BTR, you know, lease up king. So what what do we do here? So it can be really any piece or part of it. If you want to call us and just have a, a consulting call where we go through your finances, or we tell you about the market, or you just want to peek into some of the things we do, we're really available, um, customized to clients needs. So whether you want the whole package, um, you can find it all here, but we're, we're available piece by piece as well. Excellent. Okay. Is there, is there anything that I have not asked you that you would like to talk about? Um, I feel like we covered a good amount of them, um, but I, I will expand on the customization piece mm-hmm. a little bit more. I think that, you know, when clients come to us, it's, you know, they have, their expertise and it could be in development or it could be in marketing. It could be in a variety of different things. Um, and that's why we're, we're kind of flexible. So, you know, a big piece of my job is to find out what you need um, and, and then hook you up with the in-house resources that are the same that work on our Mark Taylor communities um, and have been through that and are now available for consulting. So we're really flexible to the needs of others. And it's just kind of, you know, if you don't know what those needs are, that's that's really our job as well, that we can tell you what you're not thinking of. If you say, I think I've thought of everything, but, you know, we'll say, well, did you think about this or did you think about that? That makes sense. I, I'd like to key off of that. So I'm a potential client. I call you up, kind of walk me through, I'm going to call it a discovery phase, um, but walk yeah. me through that discovery phase so that if you know yeah. somebody watching this wants to engage with your services, they kind of have a a thumbnail sketch mm-hmm. of what they, they're looking forward to. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll typically, you know, whether you call me on the phone or email, I'll ask, you know, a little bit about your situation so that I can bring on the proper consultants and we'll have a discovery call. And if it's say development, I'll, I'll bring on Jake, who I mentioned, or mm-hmm. if it's, you know, something s- specific to that, that would be in John's wheelhouse, I'll even bring on John. Mm-hmm. Um, it really just depends. Um, and we'll have a discovery call we'll, we'll, where we'll walk through, you know, what's the situation, what are you, what's your goals and, and try to understand that. And, uh, and then we, we take it to, you know, we enter an agreement and we, you know, kind of project manage you and account manage you through the process um, where you have sort of this one point of contact that is gathering all the information. So you may be getting your information from me or delivering, I'll be delivering your product but I'll be using you know, 10 different people from all of our different teams based off of what you need and delivering that to you. Or, you know, we'll have a call with the proper consultant if you just want to talk through things. So I'm kind of your entry to, to all things Mark Taylor that, that you could need. And what I love about it is it's the same resources that have worked on our assets. So, you know, managing directors that have worked on our assets. Um, if, if it's a high rise, for example, you know, we have a managing director who's worked on high rises and can tell you all the intricacies of like downtown Phoenix and the things that you need to think about. So I, I really tap on the the diversity of expertise and, and bring it all to you in one package. And it's really just about, about making it easy to find answers. So if it's an answer 
that we use a you know a third party for um i'll grab that and, and deliver it to you so that's kind of what the journey looks like very good I really appreciate you unpacking that. I think if, if an audience member is interested, it's always nice to have a little thumbnail sketch of what you're you're going to express yes. in the experience. So uh, I'll tell you what, this is this has been wonderful. Let me give you an endorsement, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kid you not. If you've not experienced Mark Dealer um, firsthand being in Phoenix or you've not heard about them out in the on the internet or in the interwebs, it's uh it it is really quite different, at least from my perspective, and somebody who's been in the operations of multifamily for 30 plus or minus years, it's, uh, it's a big deal. They're very I really good appreciate people. that. <laughs> uh, we love it. And I'm, I'm super happy to be here. So I back that up. <laughs> Definitely. All right, Allison. Well, I uh, really appreciate your time. I appreciate you investing a little bit of it with us here at Multifamily Collective. Where can people find out more about the consulting services or how can they get in touch with you directly? So they can go to marktaylor.com slash consulting, or they can email consulting at mark-taylor.com um, or just, you know, find me on LinkedIn and, and give me a call or shoot me a message and I'll always answer. Well, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And for everyone else, we'll see you next time on Multifamily Collective.